Hi there. Welcome to BI Consulting Pro. In our last video, we discussed about how to use Apache Spark in Microsoft Fabric. And in this video, we are going to get to know how to use data tables in Apache Spark. Data tables are built on the powerful Delta Lake table format, commonly used in Apache Spark. Delta Lake is an open source storage layer that enables relational database capabilities for batch and streaming data. By leveraging Delta Lake, you can implement a lake house architecture with SQL-based data manipulation in Spark, complete with transactions and schema enforcement. This approach creates an analytical data store that has all the advantages of a relational database system with the flexibility of data file storage in Delta Lake. So if you would like to know how to create these data tables in Lake House, then this video is for you. So please stay tuned with me till the end of this video. And also, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe this channel and also hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our updates. Now, enough of the talking, let's get started. Very first, let's see how Delta Tables offers numerous advantages. Over here, you enjoy the flexibility of querying and modifying data with CRUD operations similar to relational database systems. Number two, AC transactions. Benefits from the transactional support with automaticity, consistency, isolation, and durability for reliable data modifications. Number three, data versioning and time travel. You can track multiple versions of rows with transaction logs, enabling easy retrieval of previous data states. Number four, batch and streaming data support. You can utilize data tables as sinks and sources for both static and streaming data, thanks to Spark's structured streaming API. At last, number five, standard formats and interoperability. Over here, you can store your data in parquet format, data tables integrate smoothly into data lake ingestion pipelines, and you can query them in SQL via the Microsoft Fabric Lakehouse SQL endpoint. So these were the five main benefits that you get while using the data tables in Apache Spark or in Microsoft Fabric. Now we are gonna do an exercise or a hands-on. Now let's head over to my Microsoft RBA service. Over here, very first, we are going to create one lake house. For that, we are going to go to our premium workspace. You can see that I have already created Microsoft Fabric premium workspace over here. And over here, we are going to create one lake house. So how to do that? For that, we are going to need some data. I have already downloaded some of the data that we are going to use for this video. So let's see what we can do further. First of all, you have to switch to your data engineering experience. For that, you can come at the bottom of your Power BI service, you would see this Power BI logo. Over here, you would find the different experiences. Either you can go from here, also you can directly come over here and you can see Show All. And here you can directly see your data engineering experiences over there. But let's try from the left hand side bottom corner. So over here, I'm going to click on this data engineering. And here I can directly see that this is the lake house. So I can create a lake house from here. So click on that. Over here, we have to provide a name so you can give any name as per your own choice i'm gonna say delta tables in apache spark that's what the name i'm giving over here but you can choose any name as per your own need or requirement after that we are gonna upload some data over here and for that what we have to do we have to first return to our browser and here we have to go to this file under the files, you will find these different options and there is the upload and upload file. So we are going to upload one file over here so that you can directly browse from there. And under download folders, I have this one file which I can use it. So I'm gonna upload this. And before going further, let's rename this file to products. So I'm gonna say this is my products file and now I can open it. You can also check this option overwrite if the file already existed. So let me check it over here and upload it. It would get quickly uploaded over here. Now, if you would go back, you would see that you have your product file over here. If you want to view that, you can also do that. So simply click on, here, click on the file and you can preview the data over there. But let's go back. Now, the step number two would be to explore the data in data frame. What we can do now, we are already at the home page and here we can start opening a new notebook. So click on this open notebook and here you will find open an existing notebook or new notebook. So we are going to say new notebook 
If you are directly going to click on this, also you are going to get the same option to open this new notebook. Here, if you would like to try something and you want to give it any name or something, you can do that very easily. In my last video also, I told you how you can give it any name over here. Like if you want to do some of the markdown, etc., that you can do it over here easily. For example, let's say if I want to write directly over here, create delta tables in Apache Spark. So if you have watched my last video, in that video, I clearly told you that you have to simply click on this, convert this cell to a markdown cell. And that's all you need to do. Now you have this welcome to your new notebook type here in the cell. And at last I have just written this create data table. If you would like to edit it, you can do that again. And here, if you would like to highlight the bottom one, just give it a space over here. That's it that you need to do and hit the enter button. And now you can see all the text has been marked down. Now we have to create a new cell so that we can load the data frame. And we are going to load our, all the data into a data frame. The file that we have just loaded, we are going to load it into a data frame. So if you are coming from a Python background or PySpark background, you know easily how to do that. For that very first, we have to click on this code button over here. And here we are going to write a very simple code. So let me just write that one. So over here, we are going to create one data frame by name df. And here we are going to say spark.read.format csv file because we know that our file is csv here we are going to give the option as true and then we are loading the file from the files products and products.csv so let's see what we are going to do over here we are going to simply run this cell it's running it will take some time because it's starting for the very first time and now our session has been started you can see on your right hand side top corner session has been started and here you can see I'm getting some of the error over here. And what is the error? All right, no problem. So what we can do over here, just come to there. And this is my product file. I can say load data and I can also say load data to Spark. So let's see. Over here, you will see there is some of the difference in the code. Which code I have written over here and the code that I have written over here. So the difference is that when I was using this, I was saying files under files, there's a folder product, then product of CSV. However, if you notice, if you notice over here, it's only one product of CSV, there's no subfolder and that's why it was not working. So either you can come here and you can say, hey, I would like to create one new folder and then you can start using it. Otherwise, simply start with this as well. This is going to work fine for you. So it's always better to learn from here. So let's see now we can see our data or not. So here you can see you have a proper your header and then you have your all the data. So that's how we can display our data frame. You can even hide or unhide your panes using these buttons. This is just a tip. If you would like to explore them, you can explore. If you want to hide them, you can hide them. That's totally up to you. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to create a table. And for that, we have to write another code. And in order to achieve that, let's create a new cell. And in this new cell, what we are going to do, we are again going to run one small piece of code. So let me run this. Over here, I'm saying df.write.format delta because my format is the delta. And I'm going to save table as the name managed underscore product. So we are going to create a delta format now and saving table with a new name. Now we can run it again. Now the job has been completed successfully. In order to check whether this has been created or not, you have to go to the Lakehouse Explorer. Over here, we have to simply click on this refresh button. And let's see whether it has been created or not. So let me refresh this tables as well because that's my table and here you can see that managed underscore product is my data table and you would find all these data table with this triangle mark over here. So that's how you can create your data tables. So data tables are nothing, it's a format that we call the data format and you can always convert any of your data framework into a data frame of, into a data format using this df.write.format. df is the data frame that we have created above and now we are writing into the data format only. And if you would like to change the name of the table, you can change it over here. 
So far we have created one internal table. Now we are going to create one external table as well. You can also create external tables for which the schema, schema metadata is defined in the meta store of the lake house, but the data files are stored in the external location. And what does that mean for you? This means simply your meta store is going to be over here in the internal storage system so that you can read the file, you can get to know what are the different columns, what are the data types, etc. But your data is still going to be somewhere at the external location. That can be your AWS system, that can be your Azure system or anywhere outside your fabric. Now we are going to create one external table. For that also we are going to write one code in new cell. So let's create a new cell and over here we are going to write this code. So what is this code is saying? It's simply saying that df.write.format table and we are going to call it external product rather than the managed products over here. You can see that and we are giving a path and this is the path we are giving over here. So let's run this code and see what happens. And here I'm getting again an error. And why is that? Because it's not finding the right path for it. So let's try to do something different over here. We are going to just remove this one because it's saying the path is not correct. And let's see whether we can resolve this error or not. And I'm getting again the same error and it's saying that relative paths on the lake house must match one of these patterns and we are not giving the path according to this pattern over here files and over here it should appear so what we can do we can copy our abs path from here we are going to go back here to our code cell code where we have written it and I'm going to write it over here. Let's paste it and then write it like this. So if you don't know about your ABFS path, then you can copy like this. And I hope so. This code is going to run now. So let's try to run it. Fingers are crossed. I hope it succeeded. And yes, it has been succeeded. So now what you can see, you have to again refresh it. And here you can see that I have created one external table managed underscore products. So in case you are also encountering this kind of issues, so you have to simply come over here and copy your ABFS path. And what is ABFS path? Well guys, in my last video also, I talked about this ABFS. ABFS is simply the Azure Blob file system driver. So the Hadoop file system driver that is compatible with Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 is known as by its scheme identifier ABFS or ABFS is your Azure Blob file system. So that's the path we are talking about here. I hope this is clear to you now. Now we are going to compare managed and external tables. So let's create another markdown over here so that we have to create another block. So we can create it like this and we can do something like this if you don't prefer to do something like this what you can do you can simply delete this one click over here markdown and here you can see this you want to make it bold so like this and then you are ready to go simply hit the enter button so this is going to be your markdown and if you want to change it you can change it i'm not going to go into further but i'll leave it to you how you would like to read it to that all right now in order to compare managed and external table we are going to find the differences first so let's first create a new cell over here so where's my cell i cannot see any button over here yeah here it is sometimes it's difficult to find i hope microsoft is going to do something about it maybe some button or something here we can get to know so here percentage sql sql means we are going to use the sql api on this apache spark and then we are writing the code of describe formatted managed table and let's run this and see what happens in this results you can view the location property of the table which should be the path of the one lake storage for the lake house and this is going to be end with tables and managed products so let's see so if I'm going to see the location, you can clearly see this is my location, which is my one lake storage path. So it's quite a long path and but it is ending over here, the tables and managed products. So basically, this is your one lake storage path. 
Now, let's see what happened to this path if I'm gonna use the external product tables. So for that, again, we have to run a code and see in the describe what it's coming out. And here you can see that it's files external products under this lake house. That means it's an external table and the previous one was my internal table. So that's the difference over here between your internal and external tables. And now we are going to drop both these tables. So let's see how we can do that. For that we have to run again some simple commands or uh, one or two or two lines of code. So let me create this code cell again. And here I'm saying drop these tables. And you can see that my both tables have been dropped. If I'm going to refresh it over here, the table should go from here. You can see that there are no tables. So I have dropped my both the tables over here. In the next part, we are going to create some table using SQL. If you are working in the data feed, this is the very first step that you should know that is learning SQL language. SQL language is the one that is gonna help you to start your career journey in the data field. So let me create one code. I'm gonna write it something like this. I'm gonna make it markdown from here. Use SQL to create tables. And we are gonna run simple SQL statement over here. But whenever you have to use the SQL statement under this lake house or under Apache's path, you have to use this small piece of code. This is percentage percentage SQL. That means you are telling this system that, hey, I want to write SQL code over here. And here I'm just creating a table in products using Delta. This is the format that I'm defining and I'm also providing the location over here. So let's see. So it has been run and over here, if I'm gonna refresh, I'm gonna see that table. So let me just refresh it again. And here I can see my product table, which is the Delta table. But not only that, if I'm gonna just get the data from this table writing simple at select start from products table i would be able to see my data over here so this is the part where we saw how to run the sql code and how you can run the different sql commands over here this is going to be my markdown cell and here we are trying to run the transaction history for delta tables which is stored in the json files in the delta underscore log folder so we would try to see, okay, what happens over here when I'm gonna run simple piece of code. So let me just run again SQL code here. I'm saying, I'm going to update this products table where I'm setting my list price equals to list, list price into 0 0.9 and where my category is equals to mountain bikes. So this should run properly. If you are coming from the SQL background, right, this won't be a big challenge for you. But if you don't know, about SQL, then I recommend you to start learning SQL now. All right, now we are going to check the history of this table. And for that, we can write another piece of code where we are going to describe history of this product table. So let me write another code over here. So first, let me find this new block here. And here you can see I'm writing describe and history of this product table. So this is basically gonna give me the history of what operations have been done on this. You can see that I have first created this table and then on the second I have updated it. So I can see what operations have been done on this table and this is really helpful where we can track all the transactions. Now we are going to run another code cell and we are going to run a code. And this code would show us the two data frames. One data frame which is containing the data after the price reduction and another is going to show us the other with the original price data. And for that, we are gonna write this piece of code over here. So you can see that I'm using over here the version as of. So if you will see on the top, you would find this takes a version one, version zero. So here it's my version zero, which is my original one. And this is the old, and this would be the, my latest one, which is the one where I have updated the price. So let me run it. And here you would find these two different products or two different outputs from this where my list price would be different. This is my list price. This would be like list price multiplied by 0 
and if I'll go a bit down, this would be the original price over here. You can also use data tables for streaming data. Delta lakes for streaming data. Delta tables can be sync or a source for data, data streams created using the Spark structured streaming API. Now, the example that I'm going to give you in this example, we are going to use a delta table as a sync for some streaming data in a simulated Internet of Things scenario. So let's see what we can do over here. For that, again, I'm going to write a code and don't worry about the code. You are going to get the link for this exercise, which is in the Microsoft document so that you can try it your own. Sometimes it's difficult to find this code cell. So over here, you can see that from notebook notebook utils i'm importing ms spark utils and then similarly pyspark.sql those types i'm importing everything and same for the sql functions so you can read out this code if you would like to but basically it's getting some of the data from one of the iot devices and we are streaming into one of the notebook over here so let me run this code my source has been created over here now you should make and ensure that you get a message source stream created. That means on your screen, you should get this message. Otherwise, it's not has been worked. The code we have just run has created a streaming data source based on a folder to which some data has been saved, representing readings from one hypothetical Internet of Things devices. Now, let's suppose we are getting some of the data from a streaming device in the real life scenario there would be some iot devices and some data is coming then you have to just stream or store that data in one of the notebooks over here that's what we are going to do so what we are going to do we are going to write another piece of code and in this code we are going to say hey now we want to sync that into our delta table so you can see that delta underscore stream underscore table path this is going to be our path and now this would be our checkpoint path and here we are saying delta stream this is my stream and we are going to sync this data over here so let me run this and here it has been done so this code is basically going to write your streaming device data in the data format to a folder name iot device data this folder name and because the path for the folder location is in the tables folder a table would automatically be created for it and for that again you have to refresh your table so let's see whether our table has been created or not and yes it's created so we have our table and we can see the data over here so this is the table that we have created so what we can do now uh, now we can try to query the table that we have created over here so let's try to query this table and see what is the data inside it so let me come here again, write a new code and we are going to query using SQL again from the same table and let's see whether we have some data or not over there. And here we can see, yes, some of the data is over there, which is my streaming data. Now we are going to run another code and this code is going to write more hypothetical devices data in the streaming source. And then we are going to again query the same table and to see whether some more data has been loaded over there or not so let's do that quickly run it and now i'm going to write it again this code and let's see whether the data has been updated or not and here you can see that last time we have value till 9 only but now we have more values over here so basically we wrote some more data into our iot device data table and that now include all the additional values that we have return over there so this is done now we have to stop this stream so how we can stop it so once it's done once your all the work is done you can now simply stop it so for that you have to run this piece of code data streams don't stop this is gonna show this is going to stop your data stream so simply click on this and it has been stopped this is it for this exercise guys where we have created tables we have created data frames we have compared the external and internal table formats for the schemas and we have also synced some of the data from the iot device into one of the tables over here if you have any question and concern please do let me know in the comment section and also if you are looking for any trainings or if you want us to create any more videos please do let us know till then keep exploring the data tables in the Apache spark i'll see you in the next video